It is good to be this group. You can almost hear the clock ticking as we make our way toward the draft tomorrow night. This group will hear their names likely called early when the party gets underway tomorrow night at 8 o'clock Eastern, live from Dallas on ESPN. We're glad to have you with us. I'm Wendy Nix, Field Yates, Tim Hasselbeck, and Bill Polian. Adam Schefter will join us shortly. We've got you covered from one coast to the other. Josina Anderson is with the Cleveland Browns. They have the first and fourth pick. Diana Rossini has the Giants at number two overall. Sal Palantonio with the New York Jets. Jeff Darlington with the Bills. They have a pair of first round picks, including number 12. Also in our studio here with us, our NFL Nation reporters, Jeff Legwold, Denver has the fifth overall pick. Mike Reese with the Patriots has a pair of first round picks and news that Rob Gronkowski will play for New England in 2018. But first, back to the top of the draft, Josina Anderson kicks off our coverage in Cleveland. Josina? <laughs> Yes, Wendy. Well, I met with uh, new Browns general manager John Dorsey within the last couple hours. And the first thing I wanted to know is, are you settled with what you're doing at the number one pick? And Dorsey told me, quote, I think we are in alignment and everybody understands what's going on here. And Wendy, many believe that the Browns are going to take a quarterback with their number one pick. And Dorsey to that end commented and said to me, I think there are five quarterbacks worth discussing. We have talked about everything about those quarterbacks and we like where we are. I also asked Dorsey, does Johnny Menzel's tenure impact who you're attracted to or who you do not prefer? And he told me, we have turned over every stone with these prospects. We like all of their personalities. And he said, I feel like I can tell a prospect's soul within the first 15 minutes of meeting him. The other thing that stood out to me with uh, Dorsey's conversation is that he keeps emphasizing that he wants a winner. So I asked him, with the personality traits, do you prefer someone who's more charismatic, like Baker Mayfield, someone who's more serious, like Sam Darnold, or someone who's more cerebral, like Josh Rosen? And he said to me, quote, what I want to know is, do your teammates like you? Do they trust you? Do they respect you? And are you worthy of being in our community? And lastly, I said, since you said you know what you're doing at number one, are you going to stay pat at that number one? Are you still taking calls? And right when I said that, his phone actually rang and uh, he was looking at it. But unfortunately, Wendy, the uh, face of the phone was turned down, so I was not able to see who was calling right at that moment. And now we're going to send it over to Diana Rossini, who is with the Giants. Great stuff, Joe. It is all business here at the Giants facility. I was told new GM Dave Gettleman actually sent out a mass email to this Giants staff and said, turn the sweats in and put on the suits and tie for tomorrow night inside the war room. But probably a little bit more important, new head coach Pat Shermer said that they are all on the same page when it comes to their choice. And he feels confident that the person that they pick tomorrow night will make an immediate impact on this Giants team. Now, I have been told from a Giants source that it's coming down to two choices, a quarterback or a running back. And we know that this Giants organization has showed a lot of confidence towards Penn State running back Saquon Barkley. But others around the league have told me that Dave Gettleman is a bit of a wild card and he could still go with Bradley Chubb. And if you may recall, Dave Gettleman has said in the past that one of his priorities is after tomorrow night's pick, he hopes one day that pick will be putting on a gold jacket. That's the latest from the Giants. Let's send it over to Sal Palantonio, who's with the other New York team. Sal? Hey, Diana. Each of the last nine first-round picks of the New York Jets have all been defensive players, the longest streak of any NFL team since the 1970 merger. I can guarantee you, with the number three overall pick, the Jets are not going defense. They had all four of the top quarterback prospects in this building in Florham Park, New Jersey, working out for the head coaches, for the head coach and the coaches, talking on the whiteboard, going through plays, talking with the front office staff. They are impressed with all four of them. And they're not shying away from any controversy. When Todd Bowles was asked about the antics in college of Baker Mayfield, here's what he said. Hey, it's college football. He's an emotional guy. I've seen T.O., Terrell Owens, he was talking about, do a lot of things. I've seen worse than that. Players get excited when they play. Now here's my friend Jeff Darlington up in Buffalo with the Bills. Jeff. 
Well, Sal, the Bills might not be picking until number 12, at least at this point, but this building is still among the most intriguing in the NFL. And let me explain a little bit into why. This is a team without a franchise quarterback right now, one that could be looking to trade up into one of these top five picks. But I did have one executive who's picking within the top five say that they don't believe that the Bills will have the ammunition to get up to number two. Throw out the trade chart, he said. This is a very valuable pick at this point. But we should point out the Bills do have a lot of ammunition. They've got the 12th overall pick. They also have the 22nd overall pick and a number of other picks in later rounds. Now, one thing that I've been told is to watch the fourth overall pick, that currently held by the Cleveland Browns. If, in fact, the Bills can't get up to number two with the Giants, potentially they could move into that number four spot, that being the spot to watch right now, to get their potential franchise quarterback. Wendy?